In this tutorial, I'm going to show you where to find and how to use MailChimp merge tags to customize the emails sent from MailChimp, how to add information from merge tags to a URL in an email that you can then have people sent to a landing page where the landing page is personalized based on the merge tags from MailChimp, meaning you can add their first name to the page or last name to the page, whatever data MailChimp has, you can add that to that page through the URL and with some JavaScript code I'm going to give you that you can just copy and paste. And I'm going to show you to do all this right now. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If it's your first time here and you like WordPress tips and tricks and getting better at it and serving your clients better, then start now by clicking subscribe. Then click the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And make sure you sign up for the private WP Learning Lab Facebook group where we can hang out, ask questions, help each other get better at WordPress. There's a link in the description down below, so make sure you check that out. And with that out of the way, let's head into the screen capture. I apologize in advance. I have a bit of a cold, so my voice is a little raspy than usual, but I think it should be okay. Either way, we are on MailChimp here. We're looking at the merge tag page. This is a page that has all the merge tags you can use in a MailChimp email. There are a lot of them, and we are going to use specifically the F name merge tag in this tutorial, and every other merge tag is going to work the same way. So if you know one, you know them all. And what we're going to do is we're going to use F name to put a subscriber's first name into a URL in an email, and then when they click on the URL, they're going to go to this page, and I'm going to add their first name before the need. So it's going to say, in this case, Bjorn, comma, space, need help with that. And that's how we can personalize a landing page. And any of these merge tags and any number of them can be added to a link in an email and then merged into a page. So really, you're only limited by your imagination when you're doing this. So to get started, first, we have to create the email. So let's do that first. Inside of MailChimp, I'm in the campaign section. Just click on campaigns to get here. Click on create campaign. I'm just going to send a super basic email in this example, but this works in any email you send. It can be an email that's sent through an automated sequence if you want. But in this case, because I want to send it right now and see it right now, I'm going to make it a broadcast email. So I'm going to call this merge tag testing. Click on begin. Who am I going to send it to? You have to pick a list, obviously. I'm going to pick this list right here because it has one of my own emails in it. So we can check out what this looks like. Personalize the to field. Here we can add merge tags as well. There's the F name one. It's going to add the F name merge tag. This is going to be in the to field in the email that we're going to see in the inbox. It's going to come from me. The subject line is going to call it testing MailChimp merge tags. For the content, click on design email. Again, any design you want will work. I'm going to do something super simple, just simple text. And I'm just going to change this text here. I'm just going to add a link. Click here for more information. Highlight that. Click on the link or the chain. I'm going to get the URL of the page I want to send them to. Paste it in here. Then I'm going to get my merge tag that I want to add. Make sure you get the stars and the pipe characters, or the asterisk is in the pipe characters. And then we want to add it to the URL as a parameter. And we do that by first adding a question mark. You can have the forward slash there or not. Depends on how your site is set up. One of those two will work. Maybe both will work. Then we add a parameter. In this case, I'm just going to call my parameter first name equals. Then we paste in the actual merge tag. If we want to add multiple merge tags, then we add an ampersand and we say email equals, for example, go to our merge fields here. Here's the email merge field. Copy that one and paste that into here. I deleted the equals, going to make sure I add that back in. And now when this link is generated and this email is sent and the link is generated, it's going to replace, I lost the equals there as well. It's going to replace the F name or it's going to replace this merge tag with the first name, this merge tag with the email, and then we can use that on the page. Using JavaScript code, I'm going to show you in just a second. So we're going to insert this into the email. I'm going to click on Save and Close. Save and Close again. And now it's complaining because I have too much default content. 
It's gonna fix that. One of the pitfalls of just doing quick demos is that it wants you to customize everything. So I'm just gonna delete all this stuff aside from my link. And hopefully that's enough uniqueness that MailChimp thinks it's okay to send. And it's not. Let's try that again. Now it should be okay. Yeah, now it's okay. So now MailChimp thinks we're good to go. And we can click on send up at the top or schedule in your case maybe. I'm gonna click on send. I'm gonna click on send now. It's gonna to go to one subscriber. And while that email is being sent, because it's not sent instantly, it goes into the queue, then it's sent out through the MailChimp queue because everybody's sending emails from MailChimp, not everybody, but a lot of people are. And yours is added to the queue and sent in priority order. First come, first serve. What we have to do now while we're waiting for that email to send is add some JavaScript to the page. So on this page right here, link to down below in the description, there is some code at the very bottom. Double click into this area, highlight all the code, copy it, go into the editor for your page, and I'm just gonna add the code, this is the Divi theme right here, I'm just gonna add a code element but you can also do this through the functions file. You can add this JavaScript directly to any page through the functions file. I've linked to a video in the card above and the description down below where you can put this code into the functions file instead of directly into the page and you can have it appear on multiple pages if you want. So there's a couple things we have to customize here. The first part of this code you leave as is, but we need to customize the capitalized words. In this case, variable, parameter, variable again, input field ID and variable again. So the parameter is what is in the URL. And we defined that just a moment ago as first name. The variable is something we define and it's used internally in the script. So I'm gonna call this their first name, then copy that. And we need to replace a variable here with that. And this variable over here with that variable. And what this is checking for is, if you don't have this, you might have cases where the word undefined or null is inserted into the page, which doesn't look good. So we only allow this part to run if there is something in this variable besides undefined or null. And then we need to ha add an ID, and this is where the text is gonna go. So I'm gonna call this ID input subscriber first name. Yours don't have to be this long, I just like to have descriptive ID so I know what I'm doing. I'm going to copy this ID. Now we have to add this to the page. If we go to the top where our headline is, which is where we want to add this thing, I'm going to add a span tag because a span tag doesn't appear if there's nothing going on. And if there is something going on, it does appear. So I'm going to add an ID, which is the ID we just created in the script. Input subscriber first name right here. The inner HTML part of that JavaScript function at the very end, that will write content into the span tag if there is any content in the URL. If there's no content in the URL, this span tag will be in the source code, but you won't be able to see it on the page. Now we're gonna see how this works. So let's click on save and exit, update the page, come back out here and refresh this page. And we see that nothing has changed. But if we check in the source code, by using the inspector, we will see inside of the H2 element, we have a span tag which currently has nothing in it because there's nothing in the URL up here. So now let's go check if we have the email. Here's our email. Click to open that. Here's the link we created. Click on that to open it. And now if everything went well, it's gonna be inserting my name into the page. And there's my name right here in the page. Now I just have to fix the issue of there not being a space between my name or the subscriber's name and the word need. And we do that by concatenating some information together. We're gonna to add a comma and a space to the variable for the first name. To do that, we head back into our editor, we go to the code, and we do some JavaScript code in here. What we have to do is add a new variable. I'm gonna call it full string equals, we copy the variable name of their name, and we paste it right there. Then we type period, concat, open and close brackets, 
semicolon inside of here. I'm going to open and close quotes, add a comma, and then a space. Now it's going to add this comma and space to the end of the first name variable. Now I have to copy this full string row because that's now our new variable with the subscriber's name with the comma and the space and replace the one that's being written into the page right there. Click on save and exit, update, come back out here and refresh this page. If everything went well, we should have a comma and a space now after the subscriber's name. And there's our comma and the space. And that's how we add parameters from a URL into a page to personalize it. And then we also have another parameter in the URL, the email, which you can add to the page in the exact same way we just added first name to the page. You can concatenate things, you can add things together. Obviously, you have to know a little bit of JavaScript or at least be able to Google it, be confident enough in your abilities to, to Google it and figure it out because with JavaScript, you can't really break a whole lot. The worst case is that the JavaScript just won't work on the page. So then you go and you fix it and then it'll work again. It's not going to take down your site as long as you don't put it in the wrong places. If you're just editing it on the page like we did here, there's almost nothing you can do wrong with JavaScript. And the nice thing about doing merge tags the way I just showed you is you can use this page for people who don't have merge tags. So this is an example of someone coming through an email from MailChimp with merge tags. But if I delete the merge tags up here and refresh this page, it's going to go back and be viewable as a regular person who did not come from a link because it just takes out what we, what we did. And we can easily put it back in. First name equals Jerry, and then it's going to add Jerry in front. And that is how we use MailChimp merge tags. It takes a bit of work, a little bit of practice, but luckily all you really have to do is copy and paste the code, do what I showed you in the video, and you'll be adding merge tags from MailChimp to your pages within the next 15 minutes. So that's how we do it. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you hit subscribe and the bell icon so you don't miss anything. Check out the private Facebook group and the link in the description down below. And next up, check out one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you can get even better at WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.